This video is brought to you by Skillshare. This episode is presented in 4-3 format to preserve the integrity of SkillUp's creative vision. Wait, what? What the hell is this? Is this 2004? Ladies and gentlemen, girlfriend reviews may make some of the best video game content on YouTube, but in this instance, they are sorely mistaken. This is This Week in Video Games, the show that is proudly 16 by 9 all the time. Get those black bars out of here. Let's get this show on the road. GTA 5 is a game you might have heard of because it's still, every week, one of the top 10 selling games on every platform, even though it was released like 85 years ago. If you have ever played it, you'd know that its load times are pretty crazy, rivaling Morrowind on the original Xbox for the title of Holy shit, is this still loading? Some weeks back, a GTA modder by the name of Tost claimed he had developed a fix that would reduce load times by up to 70%. That's a lot. Rockstar caught wind of this, and after they did their own testing, they confirmed it. Quote, After a thorough investigation, we can confirm that the player Toss did, in fact, reveal an aspect of the game code related to load times for the PC version of GTA Online that could be improved. As a result of these investigations, we have made some changes that will be implemented in the forthcoming title update." End quote. That's right, Rockstar are rolling out this update to all GTA players, and to say thank you, Rockstar awarded Tost $10,000, which is usually what they pay out as part of their bug bounty program. Congrats, Tost. Don't spend it all on shark cards. We know that E3 is sort of basically not happening this year, but Germany's Gamecom is more optimistic. They've announced that Gamescom 2021 will go ahead as an in-person and digital hybrid event. Now, I've been to a lot of game events in my life, but Gamescom is easily the most crowded, the sweatiest, and the stinkiest. Every room is like a unibar dance floor at 3 a.m. on $2 shots night if everyone had gone for like a 10k run before then and hadn't showered. It's bad, it's really bad, but Gamescom are promising reduced crowd sizes this year to mitigate the risk of COVID spread. I for one will be sitting this one out and watching the live streams from my home. Speaking of digital showcases, Square Enix had one this week and it was pretty good. Two mobile games were announced, Hitman Mobile, which is unsurprising because we've already had some of those, but Just Cause Mobile was a bit of a surprise. Not the sort of franchise you'd expect to make its way to mobile. We got an update on the Avengers, which teased the Black Panther expansion slated for the end of the year. And outside of the show, we also learned that the PlayStation exclusive Spider-Man character drop has been delayed to the end of the year as well. God damn, that game is such a mess. A new Life is Strange was announced. True Colors offers the same angsty storytelling, only now the protagonist's power is to sense, absorb, and control the emotions of other people. The game is out on September 10th. The thing most people were excited about was the reveal of Project Athia's final form. Square's upcoming RPG is called Forspoken, and it follows the story of a young woman in a dangerous, fantasy-inspired landscape. It's also got some pretty awesome movement mechanics. No release date on this yet, but it's currently slated for 2022. All right, let's talk PlayStation news. Big week for PlayStation, actually. This week, Sony revealed the controller designs for the upcoming PSVR 2. The fact that there are controllers in the first place is already a huge upgrade, since we had to use those stupid move sticks before, and they were just terrible. Similar to the DualSense, the controllers support adaptive triggers and haptic feedback, and like the latest Oculus controls, they support finger gestures and they are position tracked by your headset, meaning that you probably won't need to have a camera mounted above your TV to play it. Still no release date for the PSVR 2 yet, but given how much information PlayStation are sharing at the moment, I'd be surprised if it wasn't this year. The other big Sony news was that Sony bought EVO. The fighting tournament. While Microsoft is out there buying studios left, right, and center, Sony are buying tournaments. It's a weird choice, but it's also pretty cool because it gives a lot of certainty and stability to one of the longest running and most respected esports tournaments in the history of video games. If you're worried that Sony's ownership may stop them from hosting a Smash Brothers event, then worry not because Sony have already committed to maintaining a Smash presence at Evo. What Nintendo has to say about that, though, remains to be seen, because Nintendo aren't super keen on anyone touching their IP, or esports, or community, or anything really other than charging you full price for re-released Wii U games. While we're on the topic of acquisitions, don't take your eyes off Embracer Group. The amalgamation of Koch Media and THQ Nordic bought 12 studios last year, and this year bought Gearbox for around 1.3 billion bucks. They just issued more shares for another $890 million, which will serve as a war chest for further acquisitions. No one's really talking about Embracer at this moment, but trust me, in like 12 to 18 months, their name will be as ubiquitous as you. Ubisoft. Get it? 
Circling back to VR for just a second, IGN Italy spotted that Xbox was referencing a VR headset when you plugged in the newly released wireless headphones. The message referenced VR numerous times saying that the VR headset required an update. Microsoft quickly responded to this saying that, quote, the copy in this error message is inaccurate due to a localization bug. VR for console is not a focus for us at this time, end quote. But come on, man, how do the words VR make it into the mix at all? That's not a translation thing. I call shenanigans on this one, and I wonder if Microsoft isn't secretly working on some VR stuff in the background. I guess time will tell. This next story makes me very angry. Recently, Activision Blizzard announced that they were laying off 50 workers, primarily in the esports section of their business. Sensitive to the pain caused by terminating workers' livelihoods, Activision Blizzard threw in $200 worth of store credit at the Activision Blizzard store. Imagine getting sacked and you get a card that reads, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya, don't forget to buy some loot boxes on your way out the door. It gets worse though. On the same day these layoffs were announced, it was revealed that Activision Blizzard CEO and man who hates being pictured with devil horns, Bobby Kotick, was soon to receive a $200 million bonus due to the fact that he hit earnings per share targets as CEO. Personally, I think this is disgusting. I mean, where are Bobby Kotick's store credit gift vouchers? I mean, the sacked workers got them, but he doesn't. That's not fair. Seriously though, fuck this guy and fuck any company that pays such an obscene amount of money to one person after firing dozens of others. While we're on the topic of scumbag companies, EA. The fallout from FIFA Gate continues, where it was revealed that EA staff were selling Ultimate Team cards on the black market. EA are indignant at the situation, saying that it undermines the competitive integrity of their game. But everyone knows that's utter horseshit. EA don't give a fuck about that. They care about the bottom line. And to illustrate that point, one Twitter user calculated how long it would take to earn your dream team in FIFA without spending any money on packs. The answer? 22,000 hours. Luckily, EA do give you the chance to gamble for those cards, so if you want to spend a few dollars here and there, you can. All it will cost you is £80,000. See? That's not so bad. Gamers, man, always complaining whenever a company wants to charge them £80,000 for in-game items so entitled. If you were a really creepy dude looking for some advice on how to creepily pick up women, then Super Seducer 3 would have been your jam. I say would have because Valve took the rather unusual measure of delisting the game from their store entirely this week. They claimed it was because the game showed nude images of real people, which apparently is more offensive than the billions of hentai games that are now flooding my discovery queue. I mean, I don't even own a single hentai game, but Steam won't stop recommending them to me. Does Gaiman know something about me that I don't? Anyway, Super Seducer 3 isn't coming to consoles because Microsoft and Sony aren't touching that with a 40-foot barge pole, so I guess that's the end of Super Seducer, unless you start selling it in adult shops or in the back of those Japanese bookshops, you know, in the section behind the curtains. And finally, Terraria hit an incredible milestone this week. The game now has sold 35 million units, which is crazy, and has just passed Portal 2 as the top-rated game on all of Steam, at least according to Steam 250, which uses a weighted calculation to rank games. Amazing achievement. I still have not played Terraria, but I'm told that Valheim borrows a lot from it, and I'm utterly obsessed with Valheim right now, so I really need to get in on that. So what got announced or delayed this week? Well, for some reason, we're getting a VR version of Hellgate. Remember Hellgate, the first and third person looter shooter from way back in 2007? Well, it's getting a VR prequel coming to both PC and PSVR. This has actually been in development since 2015. We've literally gone through like two generations of VR since then. Anyway, it's meant to be coming out this week, so yeah weird. Scarlet Nexus is a JRPG being developed by Bandai Namco Studios. It's led by two veterans of the Tales franchise and was revealed last year during an Xbox showcase. We've now got a release date. It's hitting all platforms except Switch on June 25th. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is getting a major expansion thing. The Wrath of the Druids expansion arrives on April 29th and adds new quest lines, new gear to collect, new skills and a new seasonal event. This is probably a topic for another video, but the new Assassin's Creed games are surreptitiously transforming into live service RPGs, but we'll talk about that later. A very big and very welcome surprise this week was the reveal of Necromunda Hired Gun. Take a look at some of the gameplay. If you're getting Doom Eternal meets Ghost Runner vibes here, then yeah, totally, and I'm totally down for that. 
I think this looks great and I'm very pumped for June 1st when it hits all platforms except Switch. Disco Elysium Final Cut was promised for a March release and the developers delivered. Arriving March 30th, the update adds new quests, new characters and most importantly, voice acting for every single line of dialogue outside of the crazy inner monologue ricocheting around your drug-addled brain. Speaking of drugs, did you know that Disco Elysium's Final Cut was refused classification in Australia because my country fucking sucks? The Australian Classification Board is totally cool with you murdering and dismembering people by the thousands, but if you mention drug use in your game, then boom, banhammer. Anyway, if you're Australian, you should just import this or something, because Disco Elysium is just too good to miss. Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance was revealed back at the Game Awards in 2019, and this week we got a release date for it, June 22nd to be precise. If you play the old Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games, and this is ticking some of those boxes, but it's also quite different, because it's third person instead of the old isometric, and it seems a lot more visceral than the classic ARPGs. Either way, it looks interesting. I'm not sold on this yet, but I'm going to give it a chance when it arrives on Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. And the only delay news we got this week was from Warner Brothers, who right now are working on the third-person looter brawler Gotham Knights. While I think this looks very cool, a lot of people are cautious about this one, owing to the catastrophic failure that was Marvel's Avengers. This was meant to come out this year, but the developers confirmed that the game was pushed to 2022, no new release date provided. What came out this week? Well, The Snyder Cut came out, a movie that launched in a disastrous state, only to receive substantial updates post-launch, making it the first live-service movie. By the way, don't you think Steppenwolf looks like a character from an old GPU box? Anyway, let's stay focused on video games. Video games, right. No video games released this week, just some DLC and some re-releases. There's a Tomb Raider bundle you can get that has all three of the recent trilogy, plus all of the DLC for the low price of 20 US dollars. That price is temporary though, and it isn't on PC for some reason. I don't know why they did that, it's just on Xbox and PS for for now. Doom Eternal The Ancient Gods Part 2 came out, concluding the Doom Slayer's most recent story arc and freeing up id to focus on their next big thing, whatever that ends up being. Only a few reviews out for this at the moment, but they all seem positive, which isn't remotely surprising. And finally, The Avengers got its next-gen upgrade on the 18th, adding Hawkeye to the game and making 60 FPS possible on next-gen consoles. The Hawkeye stuff is meant to be pretty short-lived and lackluster, but the performance upgrades are meant to be excellent, with Digital Foundry declaring it a big success for the game. These updates were free to all players, which is nice. The only downside is that in order to access them, you have to play Marvel's Avengers, which is, you know, that's, that's, that's a bit of an ask. So what's coming out this week? Well, fucking everything. I feel like the publishers are keen to hit their quarter one bookings, so they just held everything back for the last week of March. There's a lot here, so let's just canter through it as best we can. Paradise Lost is a walking sim set in an alternative reality where the Nazis won the war, and you're now exploring an abandoned bunker to uncover the truth behind some mystery. It is a walking sim. It's on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and it arrives on the 24th. Black Legends is an XCOM-style tactics RPG, except it's set in the 17th century. I personally think this looks interesting. It's out on all platforms on the 25th. Here's one you should probably avoid. Balan Wonderland has generated plenty of buzz for being just bad, like really, really bad. Every preview has been like, don't buy this. It's from the guy who made Sonic, but it looks like things didn't quite come together this time around. Anyway, it's out on all platforms on the 26th. Genesis Noir is a narrative-driven game that has a rather arresting art style. If you like big, brassy soundtracks and broody detective types, then Genesis Noir is out on the 26th on Switch, PC, and Xbox, where it's coming to Game Pass as a day one release. Here's one that I'm really pumped about. It Takes Two. It's the next game from Joseph Farris. You guys remember him. Fuck the Oscar! you know? (laughs) Fuck the Oscars! Fuck you! This is a co-op only game that looks fantastic. Just absolutely fantastic. Characters, music, story, world, I love it all. Uh, His previous game, A Way Out, was excellent and I have no doubt this would be just as good or better. It Takes Two is out on all platforms except Switch on the 26th. Monster Hunter Rise is finally here, or it will be on the 26th. This is another Monster Hunter game, and the demo has been out for weeks and people love it. The only downside is that it's exclusive to Switch for now, but a PC port is promised for later. If you haven't played any Monster Hunter before, you are missing out. Get your hands on a cheap copy of Monster Hunter World and prepare to lose a good two to three hundred hours at least. Tony Hawk gets its next-gen upgrade on the 26th, so that's nice. The Kingdom Hearts series arrives for the first time on PC on the 30th, exclusive to the Epic Game Store. 
So that's kind of nice. I know a lot of people would prefer it to be on Steam, but we're not getting into that topic now. Something I think you should take a good hard look at is Narita Boy. It's a 2D side-scroller action game set in a 1980s digital kingdom. It has fantastic art design and a banging soundtrack, and there's a lot of buzz out there at the moment. It's out on the 30th on PS4, Switch, PC, and Xbox, where it is also a day one Game Pass release. Microsoft are absolutely crushing it with Game Pass right now. More on that later. Finally, The Binding of Isaac Repentance releases on the 31st of March. So if you're one of the people that's put like 2,000 hours into Isaac, you're either going to be really happy that you get to play this or really sad that you're about to lose your life again. Put this on your radar. Pray for the Gods is, well, just take a look at it. You'll know exactly what it is. It's so weird that for how seminal Shadow of the Colossus was, no game ever tried to follow in its footsteps. Well, developer No Matter Studios isn't phased, making something that looks one part Shadow of the Colossus, one part Horizon Zero Dawn, and it's even throwing in some survival mechanics for good measure. This has been in early access for a while and it's currently sitting at 87% very positive. The developer just released an update this week saying we should expect PC, Xbox and PS4 release by the end of April. I think this looks awesome and I really can't wait to get my hands on it. These guys are an indie studio so be sure to wishlist their game on Steam because that helps them out a ton. Sort of free stuff time and man, there is some good stuff this week. I mean crazy good. Like. Perhaps the best week ever. Okay, here we go. Small stuff first. As always, we have the Epic Games Weekly Refresh. This week, it's still the fall, but on the 26th, it ticks over to Creature in the Well, which is sort of an action pinball hybrid, which looks pretty fun. Next up is Game Pass, which is just this week's insanity. Okay, so first of all, there's the regular monthly refresh, which is adding games like Outriders on day one release, Genesis Noir, day one release, Narita Boy, day one release. But wait, there's more. Star Wars Squadrons is arriving for consoles, and that game was excellent. Pillars of Eternity Deadfire is coming if you're looking for a classic CRPG fix. Octopath Traveler is coming to console and PC, marking the first time this game has been playable on anything other than Nintendo Switch. Yakuza 6 is coming, and capping all of this off, Nier Automata, one of the greatest games I have ever played, is coming to Game Pass for PC, and it's actually been patched since Square Enix shamefully never bothered to patch the Steam release, even though it had all these glaring issues. This is an incredible month for Game Pass. We are not done yet. This month, EA Play's entire subscription library is now available to PC players through Game Pass. It was previously available to console players, but now PC players are in on the action. This adds 60 new titles to Game Pass for PC, including stuff like Jedi Fallen Order, Need for Speed games, the Battlefield series, and EA's entire portfolio of gambling-based loot box simulators, also known as EA Sports. This stuff is available right now for Game Pass PC subscribers, so yeah, go and enjoy yourself. Not to be outdone, PlayStation went a little crazy this month. Remember how last week I talked about their Play at Home initiative designed to give us stuff to play while we're all stuck in quarantine? Well, the next drop is coming March 25th, and it includes Rez, Abzu, The Witness, Enter the Gungeon, Moss, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Paper Beast, Thumper, and the extraordinary Subnautica. And next month on April 19th, Horizon Zero Dawn will be free as well. All of these games I just listed are totally free of charge, no PS Plus required, no strings attached, just straight up free. Nintendo fans, don't worry, Nintendo isn't gonna leave you hanging when everybody else is getting all these amazing games for really cheap or free or whatever. They got you. Okay, this week, Nintendo will be delisting the Super Mario 3D All-Stars bundle, so you now need to pay three times the price for it when you buy each game individually. You're welcome, Nintendo fans. You are welcome. Guys, the feel-good story of the week is a little different, but it's more important because it's about able gamers. Most of you out there never had to think about what it's like to live with a disability, but millions of people all around the world live with a disability, and many of them want to play video games, unburdened by whatever holds them back, Enter Able Gamers, a charity focused on making play more possible by building supportive communities, developing new accessible technologies, and working with game makers to ensure that accessibility is top of mind when they're designing their games. This month, Able Gamers are pushing for a $1 million fundraising stretch so they can help change the lives 
of more gamers living with a disability. If you can sling them a couple of bucks, even a single buck, anything would help and you'd be helping out a cause that really deserves it. I'll leave a link to their fundraising effort in the description below. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been the week in video games. I'm sorry it wasn't four hours long, but my editor actually does his job and tells me, no, don't put that in. We don't need four Snyder Cut jokes this week, Ralph. Three's enough. And I listen to my editor because he's way smarter than me. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, drop a like on the video and leave a comment below about something, some, anything. Hopefully something controversial so that people start replying to you and the algorithm gets all moist seeing that sweet back and forth. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Before we go, this video was brought to you by Skillshare, a platform that has the power to change your life. Sound like I'm exaggerating? Well, I'm not. Back in the day, I was working a normal desk job and I wasn't loving it. I wasn't loving it at all. And I was trying to break into the world of video games and I wasn't having any luck because I had no experience and the market here in Australia is so small. Long story short, I says to myself, I says, why don't I just do my own thing? So I went online and I found how-to guides for how to become a YouTuber, how to record my videos, how to edit those videos, how to improve the quality of my sound recording, etc. These were all separate guides from all over YouTube and other websites and Reddit posts I found and it, it was a total mess. Today, you don't have to do the sort of confused running around that I did because today, there's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. On Skillshare, millions of members come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare's courses are put together by experts in their field, and taking part in them allows you to connect with those creators and other students. You get to build a community around the thing you're passionate about, supercharging your ambition and creativity. Best of all, Skillshare Skillshare is super affordable, being less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. To get started, click the link in the description below and as an added bonus, the first 1,000 people to click the link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.